You guys ready? Because 
Moms for America Believe Stories is what kept our, our history alive. Families telling families. So we have programs here where you go to the, the kitchen table or the breakfast table and you tell a story, and that preserves it. The Bible was told family to family before it was written down. What do we do with our children? The schools, the culture have canceled the parents. They're pulling them away. Guess what the Ayatollah Khomeini said? He said, after the overthrow of the Shah of Iran, the young have risen to overthrow the evil corruption. The Ayatollah knew to overthrow a country to come after the children. Nazis did the same. Why are we allowing our children to be taken from us through the educational system? So that's why we're here. We want to promote parents. We want to promote the return to patriotism and the, the content. But I'll leave you with Psalms 102. This says, why his word continues. So let me go to Psalms 102. You probably can quote this. I'm sorry. I have to read it. Psalms 102.18. Let this be written for a future generation that a plan that a people not yet created may praise the Lord. That's our purpose. That's our purpose. So that a generation not yet created can praise their Lord. But remember this, because I asked the Lord, why, why are you, I'm trying to do what you're telling me, why do you attack come? Simple is when we did national model program. The, the media came after us. Even our, some of our fellow Republicans came after us. And I said, Lord, why? Today things came up and I said, Lord, why? He gave me this scripture, Psalms 101.8. This is what David said. Every morning I will put to silence all the wicked in the land. The land is our community. The land is our community. So thank you for hearing. We hope that um, we can share our heart and what um, we hope that this organization can help our community do to strengthen families and to not cancel, cancel out. And there's one, this is a really important thing. We have thought about the cancel culture, but we're ignoring the fact that the older, wiser people are being canceled. We know from the Bible that we've been warned about that that the mothers are supposed to teach the youngers. But now, it's not cool to be old. We're seeing all of these programs, let's bring in the youth, let's bring in the youth. But left unchecked and unmentored, we're, are we creating more habits than we're helping? Just to, just to see for you all to think about. Thank you. Each one of us has a different path that we have taken in our life. You can hear and see what Teresa's path has been. Mine has been somewhat crossover in both healthcare and education, but a little different. So God has provided each one of us our own vision of where we need to go. And let me give you a little journey. I think it started back in, actually, in high school. Um, maybe even before that in junior high school, where I started doing um, much in regards to being involved in the church. My parents were my educators, going to church and in the youth groups there, learning about the Bible, hearing the stories, as Teresa said, and the elders passing that on and building the church. Then going um, into high school, um, how many of you ever heard of Future Teachers of America? It's called something different now, okay? Very good. So that's what I was in in high school. I always thought that I would be a teacher working with children. And I think that that has then transposed or transpired over the entire entirety of my career. Um, from going into corporate, it was working with people, human resources, to then moving into something of a uh, very challenging, I thought, nature to me at the time, but now it's one of my first loves, which is training and development. And then moving into um, helping others. That's what it's always about, is supporting and helping others. I was trained in how to be a coach for managers, so that they were not being into, Teresa mentioned the authoritarianism and Marxism, 
So that's the same thing in the corporate world, where we have the authoritarian and then we have the coaches, those that actually help build the skill sets of our employees and working with them so that they can be the most successful and what they can accomplish in their own life. So that's what I was um, asked to do and went through a nine month extensive training to be an internal consultant and coach for uh, managers throughout many different areas within the country, US, and also in Canada. And it was one of the best jobs that I felt I had. So then after working with managers and seeing how that it could easily slip back, I thought, okay, I'll go back to my first love, wanting to work with children. And so that's when I shifted and decided I was going to open up my own Montessori school and had a friend that was actually a director already. So I went back, I quit a very lucrative position, went back and went to school, became a certified infant toddler Montessori teacher and worked in that a couple of years until my father unfortunately uh, came down with cancer. And then took care of my parents, who was always taking care of us. Our elders, we had to learn. And telling the stories about our um, families and our history and our country. He was a very proud person. We immigrated from Germany here, like many of our fellow people that came to this country. But always honoring what our family did and the United States in our civic duty. They were very much involved in the Republican Party um, and helping support many elections and things of that nature. So it's what we can impart that my tongue did. <laughs> so, that's okay. So that's why I went into then Montessori, is to work with the children and then um, now, full circle, after being able to use some of those skill sets in, like Teresa mentioned, our own organization of fact, freedom for academic choice and truth, and working to help rid our school system of some of the harmful indoctrinations that we have seen pop up. Yes, there are many good things that are happening in our public schools, and there are some things that we really could change. And we want to be able to give a choice, though, to our parents. It always goes back to one thing I know that Dave's going to talk about. So I hope I'm not killing your thunder here, Dave. But it's about ensuring that God said that who is really supposed to be the forefront of our children's education? The parent. The parent. Exactly. Thanks, Nellie. Our parents. It's being taken away from them in so many different venues right now across the United States. And so whatever we can do collectively, that's where I am at. So this has been a full circle for me, but I think this is where I got a vision and download from God just recently that I shared with Teresa that I am just really excited about and moving into the new direction of helping moms. That's not to say that dads aren't important because we most assurely know when they need plenty of help, we need all the help. So it's parents um, that need the help to really take their authority back that God has given us in order to be successful and to help our next generation become patriotic, God-fearing citizens um, in this very challenging world that we have amongst ourselves. I have a 13 and a half month old granddaughter, like this little booger right here. <laughs> and that is one of the reasons um, that I'm doing this as well. Because we want our next generation to be able to have the same type of history that we have. So that's kind of like where I've done a full circle and I hope you can understand our passion and where we're going with all of this. Oh, I went through that. So what we're going to talk about then is who is Moms for America? Some of the benefits. Um, our focus here is the Northwest Harris County group serving Cypress, Tomball, and Klein area. What some of the resources that Moms for America provides to all moms and what you can do then to take some of this and then get involved. Teresa, do you want to take one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. When you're busy, you kind of. But, but if it's your passion, it's okay. Here, I'll give you a mic. 
Okay. Um, it was started in, it's a national movement to reclaim our culture for truth, family, and freedom. It's a fun, easy way to come together as moms. Um, basically, one of the, the main reasons I liked it is it had, I wasn't committed to a structure. You get to create what you want to work on, how much time you want to impart. If you want to lead a group or just invite mothers over to study together. Yes. If you have small babies and you just all want to get together, that's great. If you want to go to Austin, then we're in Austin. It, boy, are we in Austin. Um, <laughs> praise God. Uh, if you want to go to your school boards, then they have support issues for going to your school boards and how to address them. So this is a very, very flexible group. You are not committed to doing anything on a specific time frame. You model this to yourselves. And with my busy schedule, this is what I needed, and I'm so excited because the resources are endless. We're gonna show you some of those. But going off of that, we sometimes can't see the forest for the trees. We know that there is so much data out there right now, mm -hmm. and it's just like, where do you hone in? Um, I was just talking to one young lady right here that I know is volunteering in three of our schools, she said. She's helping on something with her church and then also another foundation for the, the school system. So we all are very, very busy within our community. So it's very important, though, that you don't get overburdened. And so that's why I guess that Teresa and I shared with, we had to, to learn this over the last three years, what we wanted to focus on. And this is going to be our focus, where we are feeling that God has called us to now in helping our children in the next generation. And I hope that you can do that, too. Like Teresa said, this is about flexibility and adaptability for yourself. And don't think that this is something that's going to be overwhelming. So as the Northwest group, then, I mentioned that this is going to cover Cyprus, Tomball, and Klein area. And... Our focus is on faith, family, and freedom. And Teresa also mentioned that we're about providing resources. But it's really getting a lot of resources that are automatically available to you from Moms for America. And then we're going to substitute it, or not substitute, but add in much of that that is more local and community and state um, related that will be just in time for your needs. And that's what I think Moms for America that I was so excited about is that number one they have things that are just in time relevant and that is going to um, be related to what's happening in our community and not just something that's national because we get tired of hearing all of the stuff that's happening in washington dc or at least i do okay so that is our passion and what we're going to focus on and i think um, it's worth reiterating that we feel that the destruction of our nation is really happening through our children. And everything that we can do to collectively work together, instead of getting into our own little silos, and this is not about just Moms for America. Moms for America works with many organizations to help collaborate, provide the resources to help support. So it's, it's doing that. So these are on the list. The first one that I'm going to talk about is really a very, very easy, navigable website. And if you go out there, I can assure you, you'll say, oh, wow, I had no idea. And believe me, when Teresa um, and I first heard about it and then she got to go to Branson and she was telling me more about it, I got more excited. And looking at the website and all of the things that were falling into place, and this just happened like Bam, bam, bam. You know how God does that sometimes? That he just says, okay, this, and then this door is open, and then this door is open. We just went to a meeting the other day with uh, Pastor Dave, and there's just more doors open. It's just been just like that. Amen. So this website is kind of like that, opening up many doors we have for you that are going to give you the things that you feel are important. Um, how many of you have gone to a biblical citizenship class yet? I know Elsa has. Yeah. Biblical citizenship is a coordinated um, program now being offered virtually. They just started it on, from Moms for America, and they're partnering with Patriot Academy in order to do so. Nice. nice. So that's what I mean. 
is that they are not just, you know, in a silo. They want to collaborate and work with everyone and providing the content that is very polished, professional, and research. So that's being from the training and development world, I always want to make sure that that is. You're clicking. Okay. So some of the things that they offer on there is um, for kids that it's important to me that you might want something else is uh, cottage for kids, cottage meetings for kids. Um, and then they also have something on the Constitution, a Patriot um, pack for children where they have a book, they have a t-shirt, they have a certificate to encourage your child to want to, to learn. Um, one of the things that uh, Teresa is gonna mention that goes along with that little map up there at the top. I know we're starting school here soon, but if you wanna go on vacation, then some of the places they have a map where you can go and click on it and it tells you different historical sites that you can go. So it's already set for you in whatever state you're in or you want to go to, you'll be able to pull up some historical sites to visit. Nice. Um, this week alone, I went to New Mexico, northern New Mexico, and for the first time I saw one of the most wonderful Vietnam veteran memorials. It was amazing, a hidden gem that was there. It told the most raw stories with, the, with real footage of what our boys went through in North Vietnam. <coughs> It was heartbreaking, but it showed something that the children now need to know. This is a huge part of lost history, so I encourage everyone that even is passing there to go visit that war memorial. Uh, a father simply started it, he built it, because his son was ambushed. It was a father's heart. Again, these are about parents. One thing that they told me the first five minutes after I walked in, they said, this man joined, and again, remember when I talked about partnering? This man partnered with the Department of uh, Disabled Vets. He thought that was a good thing. But guess what they told him? He was too old, they would take it over. He went to court, kept his vision, kept his organization that someone tried to take from him. It cost him money to do it, but he won. And he died on site, making sure that the veterans could come there and their families and heal from the Vietnam War. So some of the other things that, um, have you been there for um, So some of the other things that they have out there, uh, specifically for you as a mom, there's much support for your children and for you. So. Mom Talks, there's all kinds of podcasts out there. On that first uh, slide, you probably saw that there's different webinars that you can attend. There's gonna be things that will come in. There's different things that if you sign up for their newsletter, that you will be able to get um, email dis discount programs. One of them that I just recently got that, we're gonna, got that we're going to be putting out in our group is the Constitution Boot Camp for our children. They have the backup. Um, rallies and events. How many of you went to the border security event in Austin? Great. That was sponsored by Moms for America and some other groups as well. But Moms for America was definitely there and present. Um, podcasts I mentioned, and then we're going to have our own, um, and we're in the process of doing all this so that we can have our launch coming up here very soon for our respective group. And we will have our own website and Facebook page so that we can share out much of the information that's happening locally and within our state that's, like I said, relevant. So what can you do is join. Teresa and um, Tammy have uh, forms back there for you to be able to join our group here in this area. And then take a look at the website. I think, like I said, you'll be amazed at some of the ideas out there. One of the pictures that is right here. This is what Teresa did with her own grandson. Um, he wanted to, you want to tell that story? During COVID, his, um, his school said he had to do a project on the Revolutionary War. He said, Nanny, I want to I want to make a flag. So I got my sewing machine out. He said, I don't want to sew, I want to make a flag. So I should have brought the book, uh, but he made it from scratch to end with his grandfather. He used math because every one of those stripes is a separate piece of wood. 
So they used every bit of math, they used every portion of what education would be to make that. We've got pictures of him painting it, we've got pictures of him measuring it, and we had to put it in a little book where he hand wrote each step, and that was his project. Um, he was going to be here tonight because he was going to read for us George Washington's 21st, as when he was 21 years old, he had a prayer. It is phenomenal. But he had to choose God first because he was called to services today and he wanted to say um, that he'll be here next time. But at 13 years old, last week, he became, he got his first strike in the Corps of, um, excuse me, CAP, Civil Air Patrol. He's a cadet. So there is, there are things we can teach our children along the way, however small. This boy is taller than me. I, I, they come and they go so quickly. It's so important to take every opportunity to teach them about country and how to serve. And my children, like many of yours probably, I was in Girl Scouts. My children, um, all of them boys, were in Boy Scouts. And we unfortunately see what's happening to that. And so I hope that this is going to be somewhat of a support to get some of that education that is now lacking in civics back for our children. So use the resources, please. Take a look at them and back up. Sorry, I'm, I'm always in a hurry. Mm -hmm. I cook fast too, I burn the Like I said, uh, we've been into someone lately, um, last week that is homeschooling. So these could be great resources for you to use in homeschool or to supplement yes. um, for what's being taught in our school. And I forgot to mention that, Julie, uh, that excuse me, Miss Fletcher homeschooled nine children and she's a military wife. Yeah, that's the founder. Um, schedule a biblical citizenship class. I am in the process of getting my certification so that I will be able to help orchestrate that. Um, but use these to your knowledge, uh, for your knowledge, and then also share with your other friends. And we look forward to you joining our group. Okay, now you can switch. So these are some, um, to give you an idea of how much fun we can have. Uh, like I just mentioned, we were at the pastoral council with Dave and Tom and some other pastors here in the Tomball and Cypress um, area last week. Um, we have been very supportive of uh, Governor Abbott's stance on ESAs and up in Austin doing that. That was at the border rally on the bottom picture. Go ahead. Um, last week, was it a week ago already, Howard, that we were at ESD 9. So those are a few pictures there that we had with uh, Vice Chair Dana Myers, um, with uh, John Spires, who we hope to have here, no, no, not hope to have, he is scheduled to be here as a joint uh, coordination for a Cypress Tea Party in October and during a presentation of border security and fentanyl. Um, then this is where we were with uh, George Washington last Thursday, um, and Howard um, at the border rally also, and then this was the other day, um, SD18 again. So this is what we can do for you is continue to provide support for our community give you resource material in addition to what the website is, share any other ideas. We love hearing from you and what we can, all, like I said, collectively do together to build a stronger system for our children. And then we're going to be holding different events, having speakers and meetings. So, any questions? Yes, I actually do know that you work with uh, Veterans for Child Rescue. Really? Yeah, we're, we talk to them all the time. Very good. No, I appreciate all for that. That's that's rough for me. See, that's what I mean. Is there so many different organizations um, that they're a part of and uh, trying to learn everything that they are doing? So, um, any other questions, comments? Yes, ma'am. We need to get involved in getting the next candidates for Sci Fair School Board mm -hmm. elected. They've got three conservatives on there now and four liberals, and we need seven liberals. I mean, like seven years. <laughs> <laughs> that was a 40th slip behind the yeah. yeah. <laughs> That was a 40th slip, but yes, I fully agree. And so the, that's part of what we need. Doors that way. <laughs> 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 what, <laughs> <is>, okay. <laughs> yeah. what other comment that 
I heard from a parent last week at another um, county meeting is that their children just graduated and now they're going to college and these are two strong girls, women. Now, they were taught, just like Teresa was talking about from a very early age, about how important God's word is. And because of that strong foundation, when they went to college and they started having some of these questions about doing things that were not in, in accordance with their values, they said no. So that's what we want to be able to do, is to give that empowerment back to the moms and to our children so that they will be able to rely on that foundation that is provided by their parents and not by the government. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Dave, I wasn't sure they were going to introduce you or not. Oh, so. 